What is uh, rep in Nigeria and to ECOWAS? First of all, uh, Mr. Kafero, let me congratulate the FAO on its 75th anniversary and also appreciate uh, over four decades of FAO support to Nigeria. Uh, even before, I know today is World Food Day. It's, it's a period that FAO says it's an exceptional moment for countries on account of COVID-19. But even before COVID-19, we've had to deal with, as we must have heard, you know, issues of flood, you know, impacting on our food security uh, and all that. What, what has been your assessment of what had happened, you know, even before COVID-19 in terms of food security for us? Thank you so much. First, first and foremost, let me uh, uh, appreciate the invitation to, to be here. This is not my this is my first time, but it's not the last time uh, I'll be coming over here. And also to recognize the, the farmers out there because this is an important day for, for everyone. The World Food Day is a day in which uh, we appreciate the work of all those who are involved in production of food, but more importantly to uh, galvanize uh, action uh, towards uh, ensuring sustainable food security and nutrition. Let me say, uh, in relation to the topic, and this is very important, because the theme for this year's World Food Day uh, is looking at grow, nourish, sustain. That sustain is very important from what we're talking about, that we can continuously have food security uh, over there. But it has another aspect which says together, the actions we take today are uh, our future tomorrow. So our actions are very important. And I heard uh, the, the, the other panelists talking about the importance of taking action. If we don't take action, we cannot be able to overcome our issues. Now, back to the issue that we're talking about, uh, I think that we all recognize the fact that there is increasing uh, change in the in, in climate. This is a global issue and it's not only for Nigeria, it's everywhere. When we talk about floods, as you say, they're not only here, they're also in countries that are neighboring us. And therefore the kinds of actions that we need to take go beyond just Nigeria uh, because we have all these uh, cross-boundary resources that in fact uh, impact on all of us. But having said that, uh, FAO and the World Meteorological Organization uh, have been, in fact, just recently released uh, a publication that was showing uh, over the years the kinds of incidences that we have had, especially in the area of flooding. Uh, and it's very clear that uh, the, the frequency is increasing, but also the intensity. And unfortunately, uh, the, the biggest impact is on all those smallholder farmers out there in rural areas. Those are the ones that are impacted most. So, the kinds of actions that uh, we, uh, as, as, as the UN uh, generally, but also as a, as a global community uh, are looking at is, how do we ensure early warning for, for our people? And I'm glad that uh, the, the DG for meteorology is here, because early warning is very important to inform early action. The issue of, of flooding uh, is, besides impacting on agriculture, also impacts on people's livelihoods, on people's health, uh, but on the environment as well. Uh, and I've had the, the, the actions that have been taken in this country, which, which uh, I really uh, appreciate, but I think that uh, we need to broaden also our, 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 our scope into the way we manage the environment. Uh, because quite often you find that uh, I mean, many countries have floods, but the way the floods impact on them is not the same way. Mm -hmm. They impact on others, largely because of the way they manage uh, the environment. So I think the, the importance of science here is very important. Research, uh, working with research is key. The research institutions, uh, we have very strong research institutions in this country that can give us advice on the type of uh, crops, for example, that can be grown in a situation like this. I mean, people's farms were washed away. So what happens if they are have if they have to get back on the feet? We need uh, them to to plant crops that can actually tolerate the environment in which now they find themselves. And that's the research for you. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Kafara. Just before we bring in the other guys, uh, still on the commemorative uh, day.
for uh, both your organization and, uh, and World Food Day. Tell us, is the world any more hungry today than it had ever been at any time in human history? And if so, what are the factors? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, First of all, the World Food Day is not uh, an FAO day. It's actually a, a day for the entire United Nations, including all of us. Uh, but having said that, uh, the, the world, as you ask, we have, for, for well, I'll tell you that uh, in, in last year, last year, the FAO and the Africa Union released a report uh, on, on the state of undernourishment on the continent. And at that time, it was just at the beginning of last year, uh, we had 256 million people in Africa still suffering from undernourishment. So in other words, uh, people who are hungry. Then, of course, now we have new factors that, that relate to COVID. At that time, ma the, the, the drivers for that were largely uh, to do with the conflicts that we have, uh, to do with the uh, weather patterns that we have just been talking about, floods prolonged droughts uh, and all that, but also the economic downturn that, that uh, globally uh, impacted uh, on the continent. Now, of course, with the COVID and, and its negative impacts that we have seen also uh, effects everywhere, including in this country, you know, with spike of, of prices, with the uh, inability for people to, to, to meaningfully produce, but also to trade and market their produce. Definitely the numbers are rising and, and we're worried about that uh, because of the new factor now that uh, COVID brought in. Okay, I'd just, I just like to, in, in terms of, specifically with Nigeria, um, how do you rate the, how do you rate the issue of hunger? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we making progress, you know, within the context of the SDGs, meeting the ending hunger and of course achieving food security? There's, there's no country in Africa that is making progress with regard to ending hunger. Actually, uh, the report that we released clearly showed that we are off track with regard to realizing uh, the zero hunger goal. And that was before COVID. Mm. And with COVID, naturally, you would expect that, ah, we need to double our efforts. But we can do that. We can do that with commitment. We can do that with, uh, with the, the actions of everyone, everyone. G give us an insight how bad it is, really. Well, I, I talked about the numbers uh, that, that we have, because for us, we, we, we raise uh, global reports, but we also have specific uh, regional reports. Uh, in Nigeria, the, the, there is a process that actually the government is involved with other stakeholders, including the UN, in terms of assessing uh, the, the number of uh, people who are hungry. Uh, for now, uh, that process is, is largely done for, for, the, uh, for, for the northern states and the northeast. The northeast, particularly because of its uh, specific context, which is quite challenging uh, given the insurgency. Now, the last one that was done uh, before COVID in the, the Bay States, now here I'm talking about the Northeast, uh, showed initially uh, that we had 3.7 million people who were hungry in the Bay States. And after COVID, an additional 600,000 people were added on. So making a total of 4.3 million who really required uh, assistance uh, with, with food. Now that's just the base state. Base states will be Bruno, uh, the Ad Adamawa, Bruno, Adamawa, and, and uh, Yobe. 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 Sorry, Yobe. 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 Okay. Yobe. 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 All right. Thank you. Uh, I will return to you, uh, FAO Rep in Nigeria. Let's bring in now the Director of Mechanization and the Federal Minister of Agri and uh, Rural Development, that's Abdullahi Abubakar. Uh, I uh, we're, still, we're just talking about the flooding situation in, in the country. Uh, the FAO Rep in Nigeria, uh, Mr. Fred uh, Cafero. I, I, of course, you've listened to the comments by uh, by our guests. We know that there are other significant 
significant factors in the food security matrix uh, in, in the country. Uh, you mentioned COVID-19. I sometimes wonder whether COVID-19 hasn't just become another whipping boy. Uh, everybody go, you say, oh, nah, it's COVID, oh, it's COVID. I mean, let's, like, well, once humanity defeats this COVID, we'll have to find something else to do. But in terms of our food security going forward, you have the Honorable Minister of our Greek here uh, sometime uh, not too long ago, and he did say that uh, we're going to overcome uh, you know, current, current challenges. But what is the outlook from the FAO perspective? What is it that we need to do? We know that the Northeast, uh, which was the base uh, uh, location for your study, it continues uh, to have incidents of, uh, of, uh, of terror, but nationwide and therefore uh, to ramp up our food security, what would you like to see done? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, I think, first of all, this is a very good uh, discussion that we are having, especially on this day. For, for us, that's the whole essence uh, of commemorating this day, because on one hand, we, we reflect on our actions and where we are. So, I mean, from what I have heard, it's very clear that where we are now is a consequence of, of the actions that we have taken in the past or the inaction we, we, we haven't done. So it's a good discussion. Uh, having said that, uh, I think the, the issue that we in FAO have been talking about a lot uh, f with regard to strengthening food security and nutrition has to do with how we also increase the productivity uh, in agriculture. And that is for crops, that is for fisheries, uh, and, and also for livestock. Largely because uh, the, 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 there is a lot of, especially in this country, there's a lot of potential to actually uh, increase productivity in, in terms of one, the, the kinds of inputs that we, 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 we provide for, for agriculture, whether it's uh, improved seeds, whether it's uh, fertilizer, whether it's uh, uh, the practices, the management practices that the farmers undertake this needs to be improved and and it's happening i'm not saying that's not happening but we can do better uh, if we are really to able to uh, improve productivity uh, in the sector to address uh, the, the food security needs of of the population in this country but also to contribute uh, to the economy because with increased productivity you should be able to uh, uh, attract markets and export so that that is key uh, the other thing also is how we increase the variety in, 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 in what we produce and what we eat. Uh, quite often there is a lot of emphasis uh, in producing cereals and, and, and grains and, and, and less emphasis also on those nutritious uh, foods that, that balance uh, with the cereals. Uh, talking about legume, talking about vegetables, uh, talking about fruits. This country has it all. Uh, but uh, if you are to nourish a body and have a healthy population, you need to have balanced and healthy diets. And, and for us, that diversity is very, very important. And of course, uh, I always say that there's a lot of emphasis in this country with regard to crops, but, but less emphasis on issues of fisheries, which for me, I see with all these water bodies uh, in the country, there's a lot of resource that we can tap to be able both for, for, for food security, nutrition, but also incomes, uh, including export uh, of fish, both uh, inland but also marine fish. Uh, and, and livestock is, is a key resource in this country. We rarely talk about it, but it's very, very important also to, uh, to pop up the economy. What, what, what does the FAO see in terms of um, improving yield and productivity. Uh, this government has taken quite uh, a number of policies or enunciated a number of policies and programs to drive the agric diversification. And the president himself has come out to, you know, admonish farmers to grow what we eat and for us to eat what we grow. How does the FAO, you know, see that playing out? First of all, I think it's uh, very important to recognize the, uh, the, the capacities in this country to actually do things. Uh, Nigeria is known for its research prowess. We have researchers in this country uh, and research bodies that 
actually play a key role if you're talking about increasing productivity. Uh, and, and they have that ability to, to do it. Uh, as far as I I've been here three months, but as far as I understand, that there's quite a lot that the research body is doing in this country. But also the private sector, because the private sector brings in technology that is actually important in, in changing the, the course uh, of, of, uh, of agriculture in any uh, situation. So I involving private sector, linking with the research, uh, for, for us is very important and I've, I've started making my own uh, visits to some of these uh, partners you know to see how we can work uh, and I think with that it's very possible that uh, productivity can be increased uh, yields can increase and we can feed uh, our people in the country with what we grow all right uh, thank you very much uh, mr. Caffero uh, once again engineer on it let's uh, bring you in here uh, the point has been underscored by experts that Nigeria doesn't have a water problem, strictly speaking. First and foremost, let me also uh, echo what uh, you said at the beginning, that this World Food Day also celebrates and recognizes uh, what we call the uh, food, food heroes. The food heroes are uh, all these people that you are talking about who are involved in producing, in farming, in fishing, in distributing, and, and making sure that we are fed. So we, we recognize that. And uh, having heard from uh, the SSG Niger State, the importance of uh, smallholders and the role they play is, is, is critical, uh, not only here, in many countries. Quite often, uh, we as FAO, we, 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 of course, we support uh, all forms of production, including large-scale responsible investments in agriculture. Smallholders uh, working with other UN entities, UN Women, one of those, uh, in terms of organizing them, because un unless they are organized and uh, uh, are able to collectively uh, work together on their small pieces of land collectively and cumulatively, it's difficult to uh, improve technology. Yesterday we, were, we had uh, a similar discussion uh, where one of the women leaders was saying we are tired of this handhold. Uh, the handhold can't take us anywhere. And this is where the essence uh, of collective action comes in to be able to, uh, you know, manage that piece of land with new technology because it's very difficult to have technology uh, introduced on small uh, scattered pieces of land. So our collective work in terms of uh, supporting the efforts of, of, of the government as UN uh, comes in here with the, my colleague of the UN women who I've been talking about. Uh, all right, uh, Mr. Fred Cafero, uh, rep of FAO, that's Food and Agriculture Organization, one of the agencies of the United Nations. We'd like to appreciate you for being part of our conversation this morning. Thank you so much. We also would like to thank the Secretary to the State Government of Niger, uh, that's Ahmed Matane. We'd like to thank you. Uh, we're having you in our studios today for the first time. Thank we used you. to thank take you, you from, uh, from MENA during from the Mina COVID, at the peak yeah. of the COVID-19 uh, yeah, issues. Yes, thank yes. you very much so for being in our studios this thank morning. Thank you once again. Like to appreciate uh, what Nigerians will call our regular customer, a DG of uh, NISA, that is the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, Engineer Clement Nse. Thank you very much always uh, for your insights uh, on this very important issue. A deep thanks also to Abdullahi Abubakar, Director of Mechanization in the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Lansana Wone, who is a UN Women Deputy Country Rep in Nigeria, we thank you for being around. And last but not the least, uh, deep thanks to His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Nasarawa State, Engineer Adulai Sule. Uh, Your Excellency, we, we thank you very much for being uh, part of our discussion uh, this morning. Of course, we understand that uh, there's a freeze on this uh, Zoom connection to us uh, from uh, Lafia, that's the Nasarawa State Capital. But regardless, Your Excellency, we appreciate your being part of our conversation and the insights that you also brought in today. Okay, so that does it for us. Um, good morning, Nigeria, not just for today, but indeed for the week. Wishing you a lovely weekend. Stay safe and be well. I'm Kingsley Osadolo. And I'm Claire Dilabu Abdul Razak. We do appreciate you as always. Do join us again same time next week. And don't forget, always wear a mask, observe physical distancing, and of course, stand against rape and rapists.